Business class on Swiss International Airlines can be hit or miss. Join me on today's flight from Tokyo, Japan to Zurich, Switzerland on the Swiss flagship 777. This flight was the last leg of my round-the-world trip, where I flew three different airlines in business class. In this video, you will find out where Swiss excelled, but also where they delivered the worst performance of the whole trip. I paid for this ticket myself as part of this self-funded round-the-world comedy tour that I did in late 2022. Our journey today starts in Ginza, Tokyo. If you want to skip forward to the aircraft or any other part of the video, use the chapter markings on the timeline. Good morning and welcome to Ginza. You can see the glitzy lights of this luxury shopping district here behind me. I'm on my way back to Narita Airport. I just checked out of my hotel. So I'm going to walk a couple of blocks north to the Ginza line. And from there, I'm going to connect at Ueno Station and take the Skyliner over to Narita. Just here behind me, I'm passing a great Uniqlo store, which is kind of like a mid-market fast fashion clothing chain. If I can tilt the camera should be able to see it there. And that one clothing store has 12 floors dedicated just to Uniqlo. It's one of my favorite places to buy clothes in Japan. Public transportation in Tokyo is such a pleasure. When you arrive in Japan, get yourself one of these IC cards and load some money on it, and then you'll be able to use public transit all across Japan. You simply tap the card when you enter the gates, Tap when you exit and the correct fare will be deducted from your balance. Some train services do require a reserved seat. For example, the Skyliner train that I'm taking to Narita Airport today. I have arrived here at Ueno Station getting off from the Ginza line. Now it's time to grab a ticket for the Keisei Skyliner. The ticket machines are right over there. So I'm going to grab myself a nice reserved seat on that express train to Narita Airport. From the machine that also has instructions in English, I get a ticket and a receipt. To get through the entry gate, you simply insert the ticket on the right-hand side, pass through, and then you collect the ticket on the other side. I have found my car in the KSA Skyliner train. It's that number two right there behind me where a fellow passenger is boarding. Let's have a super quick tour of the front of the train and then we're going to step aboard because this train is departing in four minutes. To board this train, a Skyliner ticket is required. The seats on the Skyliner are comfortable, they recline a bit, and the ambiance is calm and cool. The train has one feature that you often see in Japan, namely that the baggage shelf has a transparent section so you can see whether you have put anything up there. When I landed in Tokyo, I took the Narita Express into town, and now on the way back, I tried the Skyliner. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a comparison between the two express services. We are stopped at Narita Terminal 2 and 3, the penultimate stop on this line. I'm going to continue down to Terminal 1, which is only going to be a couple of minutes on this train. One thing I do note is that everybody else left the train at this stop. Uh, I wonder if they know something that I don't because I'm literally the only person left here. So I really hope that there is a Terminal 1 stop after this as well. Here we are arriving at Narita Terminal number 1. Let's pack up the camera, grab the bag and uh, go to the check-in. As Narita Airport is my final destination on this train, the machine will keep the ticket. Terminal 1 has a north and south wing for check-in. Swiss departs from the south wing, as do most other Star Alliance carriers. You can see the Star Alliance logo above the row indicators. Swiss offers separate check-in desks for economy, for business and for first. Because I'm a Star Alliance gold status holder, I will check in at the first class desk once it opens. Welcome to the south wing of Terminal 1 here at Narita Airport. The check-in area is just behind me here. Swiss is checking in in section Echo today. The check-in only opens three hours before the flight departs, which is a bit of a shame because I tried to check in online so that I would be able to enter security and the lounge early. That did not work. 
In addition, they do have these self-check-in machines, but uh, they don't display Swiss on there at all. So I'm pretty sure that I actually have to physically queue up for the check-in desk. Oh well, that is going to open in about 20 minutes, so I'm just going to chill out here. Narita Airport offers the Star Alliance Gold Track, which is a fast track security concept available at many airports. This works really well. The security staff just had to take a manual look at my camera equipment. I just got through both security and immigration here at Narita in record speed. I went through these priority security, there was basically just one guy in front of me and as I went through and got into immigration there were literally no people in line whatsoever. Super efficient, super quick process. The Star Alliance carrier based here at Tokyo Narita Airport is ANA, all Nippon Airways. In theory I have access to two different ANA lounges on previous trips. I've always used the excellent lounge near gate 23. This location on the map is called November 6. Now I'm walking towards the lower number gates. I believe that one of the ANA lounges is around gates 22, 23, if I remember the map correctly. It really is one of my favorite lounges, but unfortunately today it was closed. And the answer is, I definitely did find the right lounge, but it is not open at the moment. It only opens at 1 p.m. So let's go back up and go towards the higher number gates and find the um, ANA lounge close to gate 54 or something like that. One thing that they don't have in any great numbers here at Narita are these moving walkways. So I'm gonna have to use my actual feet to walk over to the Sierra 34 area which is back the same way I came. Good to get a little bit of exercise before this 14 and a half hour flight to Zurich. I don't know if you can see here how long this corridor behind me actually is, maybe like that. I'm definitely getting in my steps today. All right, I found the area here around the 50 something gates and uh, the ANA lounge should be just up ahead taking this escalator up. Uh, let's check it out. The other ANA lounge here close to gate 53 is certainly more limited. And I know that during the trip I was very disappointed as you can see here. The lounge situation here at Narita today is disappointing. On my previous trips I have used the lounge on the second floor. That's the one close to gate 23 and I've always enjoyed that. It has a full sake bar and lots of cool amenities and delicious food. The one where I'm at today, close to gate 53, is much smaller. Plus, they have limited access to a big portion of the lounge here. There is a noodle bar, and there is one freshly cooked uh, rice and curry dish, which was delicious. But I was really looking forward to the excellent lounge experiences that I've had previously at Narita, but that is not what I'm getting today. But as I reflect on it now, a month later, it is actually a fine lounge. There are plenty of snacks to choose from, as well as several hot meals like the curry I mentioned. The lounge has endless drinks, including a robot which will pour your beer for you. Here are some of the other hot meals on offer. In addition, there is a noodle bar tucked away in the corner. They will make ramen and other noodle dishes freshly for you. They give you a little device that buzzes when your meal is ready. It typically takes about three minutes. One of the best things about this lounge is that you get great views of some beautiful aircraft. A big portion of the lounge was closed off when I arrived, so seating was limited. But later on, they did open up that section as well. In that part of the lounge, there are lots of comfy chairs, some TVs, a few of these foam booths, and generally a lot more space. All right, it is time to do the long and arduous walk without any of those moving walkways over to gate 35 where my Swiss flight is departing from. On the way to my gate, I came across a vending machine that sells travel insurance I don't know how to feel about that. As I arrive at the gate, our beautiful Swiss 777-300ER is waiting for us. 
the boarding process is a bit awkward. They ask us to line up in front of the gate. And this is the line for everybody in business class. Usually you don't get one of these lines for premium cabins. On this trip, I also flew Air Canada and ANA. None of them had a problem with me filming. When I entered the cabin on this Swiss flight, however, the first thing they tell me is please don't film the crew. What a welcome. Just no filming of the cabin crew, please. And there will be more on that topic later. Luckily, I have a great seat today, 10 kilo. And especially on the 777, Picking the right seat is essential. The seats are laid out in a staggered layout. On each row, there is a single seat and two double seats. These single seats are what we call a throne seat, with a console and storage on both sides. This is a fantastic seat, which offers both privacy and direct aisle access. There is so much space here in this throne seat, number 10 kilo. There's storage here on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side as well. I'll give you a full seat tour once we are airborne. But I'm really looking forward to this trip in the Zurich. The staff just announced that the flight time is going to be 13 and a half hours approximately today. The situation is very different on the Swiss Airbus wide-body aircraft, the A330 and the A340. On those aircraft, the kilo seats are single seats, but they only have a console on one side. Sometimes it's on the window side, sometimes it's on the aisle side. Those aircraft have much fewer throne seats. On all Swiss aircraft, you can pay to reserve one of these premium single seats. For this flight, the price was just over $200 US. But you can choose them for free at online check-in, which is what I did. We'll talk more about this wonderful seat after takeoff on this beautiful day in Tokyo. The route we're flying today is really interesting. Normally you would fly more or less northwest out of Tokyo to get to Switzerland. But today, I assume in order to not fly over Russia, we are heading straight north from Tokyo. The scheduled duration for this flight was 14 hours and 25 minutes. In the end, it was only 13 and a half hours. Here are the amenities that the crew prepared for me. There's a bottle of water and a pair of noise-canceling headphones. By the way, I love the fact that they are hanging from the dedicated hook. This is not the case with every other airline. On Air Canada, for example, you would never know that this hook, located pretty much under your seat, is for your headphones. Finally, you also get a pair of slippers, which I love. On my left, there is also a reading lamp. We get a nice printed menu. I'm pretty sure there was a welcome drink before takeoff and hot towels as well, all of which I forgot to film. Once we're airborne, the crew serves us nuts and drinks. The meal is served on a single tray, which means that once you've done with your appetizer, they will replace that plate with the main dish. This is efficient, but not as high-end as ANA, for example. As you can see here, my starter today is salmon, and the tray is already pre-prepared with the cheese and grapes. For the main course, I picked the beef cheek. This was delicious, super yummy. Once dessert time rolls around, the single tray is gone and we're back to that premium feel again. My dessert today was a chocolate tart with espresso and of course with some Swiss chocolates. And this wasn't the normal red and white wrapper, but specifically this festive edition. The tray table deploys from the side and when it's out, you cannot leave your seat. Now let's tour this throne seat 10 kilo. From this angle, you can see the consoles on both sides of the seat. In front of me, there is a literature pocket as well as a couple of coat hooks. They do also have a dedicated wardrobe on board and the crew did put my coat in there. Down on the right side, there is a storage and I put some charger cables in there. Below that is another space which I assumed is for storing your shoes. Here you can also see this nasty, yucky mess on this surface. And I promise you, I did not cause this. This had been here for a while. Now let's go back on top and there is a bin where I stored my blanket. 
Next to the bin is the Victorinox branded amenity kit. Stay tuned until the end of the video and find out how you can get this specific unopened kit for yourself. Here we have the water bottle and the headphone hook again, plus some additional storage in this little cabinet. Next to the cabinet is the tray table, and the basic seat controls are down here on the edge. Under this lid you will find more seat controls as well as the remote for the in-flight entertainment system. The lid is a bit wonky, it doesn't stay open without holding it. I had to kind of prop it against my camera lens to get this shot. Here's the menu that I forgot to film. Under the screen there is a really clever storage space with a latch. You can see my microphone in there, and this is perfect for glasses, keys, passports, anything that you don't want to get lost in your seat. It could also be your phone, your lens cap, or maybe a spare battery for your camera. The storage compartment also has a light inside, which is great. Overall, this is a really well-designed seat. Maybe you're able to tell that I used an external light to record this clip and two more. The light did visibly bother some of the other passengers, and even though I used the light for no more than 5 minutes on this entire flight, it's a good lesson for me to try to reduce that even more for the next one. One passenger however followed me into the bathroom, propped open the door and had this to say. I don't know what you're doing with your camera, but it's a little bit annoying in the back. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with the light for now. That is a threatening situation that you should not create in an enclosed space regardless of how annoyed you are at your fellow passengers. And now back to the seat, it offers plenty of legroom, whether you have it straight up or in this relaxed mode halfway lying down. While I was away in the lavatory, the crew left me some additional chocolate at my seat and that was very nice. The bathroom on this Swiss 777 is well equipped. The extra amenities include face cream, face spray and herbal lotion. There is a toilet in here of course, a baby change table and a full length mirror with these sturdy handlebars. There is a trash can, a sink and both facial tissues and hand towels. The seat converts into a very comfortable bed, but Swiss did not offer a mattress topper on this flight. This bed offered the best sleep that I had on this whole around the world trip because I slept for 10 hours. I had in my notes that the footwell feels a bit cramped when you're lying on your back, but really you cannot argue with 10 hours. This is a great bed. As a result of that great sleep, I did not have the time to check out the in-flight entertainment in any great detail. And in any case, who needs entertainment when the views are like this? The headphones provided are of the over-the-ear type, which I don't really like, I prefer on-ear headphones instead. One thing I did notice on the screen is that a notification had popped up alerting us that there were northern lights to be seen outside. Too bad for me though that I only saw this notification 6 hours and 51 minutes too late. I missed the northern lights. As I wake up, there's only 1 hour and 40 minutes left of this flight, so I order a light meal before landing. I guess this is some kind of pasta, I picked it off of the dine on demand menu. Now that the cabin is completely dark and I switched off my lamp, you can see that there are lights built into these storage compartments, that is very nice. As we approach Zurich airport, here are the pros and cons of this Swiss flight on board the 777. The absolute best thing is the seat. This throne seat is so comfortable, so well designed and it has all that storage. Do note however that it is essential that you pick the right seat on this aircraft as all the seats are not created equal. Another thing I really liked on this flight was the food. As for the cons, number one is the service. You could call it cold, you could call it curt. For somebody from North America or Asia, it could potentially come across as rude. However, for me, somebody who lives in Switzerland, I am used to this. And in any case, I don't like my service too chatty anyway. So for me, this is fine. The service I received could also be related to con number two, which is the hostility towards me filming, exhibited both by other passengers and by the crew. Here's the last example that I will mention. 
As we arrived at the gate in Zurich, the business class cabin emptied first, and I wanted to stay one more minute while the economy class passengers were deplaning to get some additional footage of the business class cabin. The flight attendant told me very clearly, the gate is closing, you have to leave. No other airline has had a problem with me bringing a camera on board. With the four separate incidents that I mentioned on this flight, it was clear that they did not want me making YouTube videos here. And that's fair enough, and it's also something that will not impact a non-YouTubing passenger. Welcome to Zurich. We arrived at the Echo Dock, and from here there's a little train that I'm going to take to the A-gates, the exit and the baggage claim. With all that said, would I recommend that you fly Swiss on this route? Absolutely, I would. Swiss remains one of my preferred airlines. I fly them a lot. On this route between Tokyo and Zurich, I have flown them many times, both in business and in economy. Swiss is a great airline with an outstanding hub in Zurich Airport. Especially if you like your service a bit cold, you will definitely have a great experience on board Swiss. I have one more recommendation for you, but before that, let's jump back into the studio for a chance to get your hands on one of these Swiss amenity kits. Hi, I have a bunch of these Swiss amenity kits unopened, and I'm looking for a way to give them away to you, the viewers. But I'm looking for a method, so put your ideas in the comments below. For example, should I do a random drawing? Something only for channel members? Should I straight up sell them? Should I auction them off for charity? Put your idea in the comments and I will continue the discussion down there in the comments section. Once I have an idea, I'll also put more details in the description below. For an airline that welcomes content creators, check out this business class flight on Air Canada. Subscribe for more videos like this. My name is Marcus Seppala. Thank you for watching.